Ah, election period. A time when democracy is meant to take center stage and the voices of citizens be heard. In countries with robust democratic systems, this season unfolds with vibrant debates, town hall meetings, and spirited discussions as citizens engage actively in shaping their future. But did you know that while the future of the country is at stake, the economy often finds itself teetering on the edge of uncertainty? As political tensions escalate, a gradual decline in economic stability often follows. You might have noticed that during election periods, the economy often shifts noticeably. Recent reports based in the US reveal several signs of potential decline, such as KPMG poll showing that while consumers feel better about their personal finances, they are pessimistic about the overall economy. This disconnect leads to cautious spending, which could slow down economic activity. Additionally, 62% of CEOs plan to delay investments until after the election due to uncertainty about policy changes, further hindering growth. The rise in the Economic Policy Uncertainty Index reflects growing concerns among businesses and investors, and recent job reports indicate a troubling increase in the unemployment rate from 3.7 to 4.3%. These are all indicators of a declining economic stability. So, how and why does this happen? Elections can significantly influence economic dynamics through various mechanisms, primarily driven by uncertainty and policy adjustments. One key factor is the increased uncertainty that surrounds election outcomes. Businesses often delay investments, especially in large projects, because they are unsure about how future policies might affect their profitability. Similarly, consumers may hold off on significant purchases, such as cars or appliances, as they await clarity on economic conditions. Additionally, governments may engage in opportunistic fiscal policies leading up to elections, increase spending to boost economic performances and win voter favor. This often results in higher deficits as they invest in public projects and social programs. While this can provide a temporary economic boost, the effects are usually short-lived and may lead to long-term fiscal challenges. Central banks might ease monetary policy around elections, potentially lowering interest rates to stimulate demand. However, if not managed carefully, this can contribute to inflation, complicating the economic landscape after the election. The underlying reasons for these effects include political business cycles, where politicians manipulate policies to enhance their re-election prospects, creating a cycle of artificially inflated economic performances before elections. Politicians aim to create favorable conditions to positively influence voter sentiment, which can lead to increased government spending, but may result in economic instability if these policies are not sustainable. Moreover, the extent of these effects varies based on the country's political structure. In nations with weaker institutions, the impact of elections on fiscal policy tends to be more pronounced due to less accountability and greater opportunities for opportunistic behavior and politicians. But it's not all gloom. Elections can actually give the economy a boost. After all, isn't that the whole point? So how does it do? Elections can provide an economic boost through various mechanisms, primarily driven by increased government spending and adjustments in fiscal and monetary policy. In the lead-up to elections, governments often ramp up spending to stimulate the economy and win voter support. Researchers indicate that primary fiscal balances typically decline by about 0.4% of GDP during election years, thanks to this heightened expenditure. This spending manifests in public projects, social programs and targeted financial assistance, all of which stimulate economic activity. Moreover, central banks may ease monetary policy in response to election pressures, often lowering interest rates by 20 to 25% more than expected based on other economic factors. This reduction encourages borrowing and investment, giving the economy another boost. Additionally, the political business cycle theory suggests that politicians manipulate fiscal and monetary policies to create short-term economic growth before elections. As a result, we often see increased consumer spending, especially on non-durable goods, as consumers react positively to government initiatives. While uncertainty might make people hesitant to splurge on big-ticket items, spending on essentials typically rises during this time. Furthermore, increased government spending on infrastructure and public services can create jobs, reducing unemployment rates in the short term especially in sectors benefiting directly from election-related expenditures, such as construction. So, why do these mechanisms work? Well, politicians are keen on creating favorable conditions for re-election, believing that voters will interpret increased spending as a sign of effective governance. However, the focus on short-term gains often overshadows long-term sustainability, as politicians prioritize policies that resonate with voters rather than considering potential future implications. The effectiveness of these mechanisms can also vary based on a country's institutional strength. 
in nations with less independent central banks or weaker democratic institutions. The impact of political influences on fiscal and monetary policy tends to be more pronounced, leading to even greater economic fluctuations during election years. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.